Dear viewers, I begin this episode by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, the creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, and by seeking his blessings and mercy on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the seal of that long chain of prophets and messengers from Allah for the guidance of man, and uh, by greeting you all in our Islamic way, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. This episode is uh, mainly directed to a very delicate problem, very critical problem to man, because I would like to discuss the problem of creation. Creation through its three dimensions, the creation of the universe, the creation of life, and the creation of man. Uh, these are three areas. If anybody enters into them, without divine guidance, he enters into a dark tunnel with no end. The Quran tells us, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, مَا أَشْهَدْتُهُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا خَلْقَ أَنفُسِهِمْ مَا كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذَ الْمُضَلِّينَ The creation of the heavens and the earth, uh, nor the creation of the mountains. And I was not to take the misleaders as my attendants. So the creation of the heavens and the earth, the creation of life, and the creation of man has not been witnessed by any one of us. So if you enter into any of these areas without the true divine guidance, you are actually entering a dark tunnel. On the other hand, the Quran is asking us to look into creation. The Quran reads, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ O mankind, walk on earth and see how did Allah begin his creation. If we combine these two verses together, and many Quranic verses are alike, we can see clearly that despite the fact that none of us has witnessed the process of creation with three dimensions, the creation of the universe, the creation of life, and the creation of man, yet Allah, or glory be to him, through his mercy, has left in the universe, in the firmament, and on the earth, many signs that can help man to reach a rational conclusion. If you enter that area, negating the creator, you can never reach anywhere. And I will give an example by uh, five verses, five Quranic verses that describe clearly the process of the creation of the universe, the annihilation of the universe, and the creation of the universe. The Quran reads, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِذِيدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُسِعُونَ Verily, we have built the firmament with great might, and verily, we will keep expanding it. No man worth his salt has ever dreamt of the fact that we are living in a steadily expanding universe. But at the beginning of the 20th century, when the process of the manufacturing telescopes has slightly developed, scientists were amazed at the fact that stars are drifting away from us. And this has created a havoc. How come the stars are drifting away from us? Where is the law of gravity? What can keep these stars in their fixed positions? And towards the uh, first third of the 20th century, astronomers came to realize the fact that it is the galaxies that are drifting away from each other. Where? to testify to the fact that Allah can create out of nothing and can annihilate to nothing. And the relationship of the stars within each galaxy is very precisely controlled. And scientists came to realize towards the middle of the 20th century that we are actually living in a steadily expanding universe. The Quran, a book revealed more than 14 centuries to an unlettered prophet Peace be upon him. In an unlettered society, spelt this fact 
so clearly and so loudly the firmament we have really built with great might and really we will be steadily expanding it who would have known this more than 14 centuries ago other than the creator himself who would have forced Muhammad peace be upon him to speak about unknown things in his time unless Allah knows in his eternal knowledge that time will come when man will discover this fact and this simple verse the glorious Quran and the correct prophethood of Muhammad peace be upon him the Quran says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتْنَهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيِّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The Quran reads having the unbelievers seen that both the earth and the firmament were a singularity, a single entity then we broke them asunder uh, and we have made out of water every living thing uh, isn't that enough for them to believe in the Creator? The fact that man discovered the expanding nature of the universe made astronomers um, say that if we go against time, this vast, immense, orderly universe will coalesce into a singularity, into a single point that's so minute that it cannot be seen, so dense that it cannot be measured. At this point, all the laws of physics and quantum physics stops to react. And actually, it's nothing there. This vast, immense, orderly universe out of nothingness. And they call this theory of the Big Bang or the Big Bang theory. And we as Muslims support this theory, not because scientists have reached a final conclusion in it but because of this Quranic notion having the unbelievers seen that both the earth and the firmament were a singularity in their early history then we broke them asunder and we have created for water every living thing isn't this an enough evidence for them to believe in Allah and uh, science disagree about the expansion of the universe but before I discuss that, the Quran says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ إِيْتِيَا طُعًا أَوْ كَرْهَا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ Allah, all glory be to him, came to the firmament while it was just a smoke. And then he ordered both the earth and the firmament. They said, we will come into willing obedience. This uh, cosmic smoke has been recently photographed by uh, the uh, Hubble telescope after leaving the area of clouds and the area of pollution and actually it proved it to be smoke and astronomers used to talk about um, a cloud of dust, a cloud of uh, minute particles and it came to be smoke as the Quran has spelled it out. And scientists disagree about the expansion of the universe. Will the universe keep expanding the time to no end? Of course, unbelievers claim that. But actually, we notice that the temperature of the universe is dropping. The universe started by billions of degrees centigrade. And the temperature of the universe, where we look, is a constant temperature of minus 3 degrees absolute. This means that the temperature is actually uh, decreasing. And if the temperature is decreasing, this means that push, outward push of the universe is also decreasing. And if that outward push will be less than gravity, gravity will cause that universe to collapse. And they call this the big crunch. And we as Muslims support the big crunch theory, not because astronomers have reached final say in it, but because there is ankutub kama bada'na awwala khalqin nu'idu wa'dan alayna inna kunna fa'ileen the day will come when we roll up the firmament 
in exactly the same way a scroll rolls up whatever is written in it or a book uh, cover would roll up whatever is written in it uh, verily we will fulfill that promise and uh, I will stop here for a short break and we'll come back to this verse so wait for us welcome back dear viewers before the break I mentioned this wonderful cosmic verse in the Quran which reads يوم نطو السماء كطي السجل للكتب كما بدأنا أول خلق نعيده وعدا علينا إن كنا فاعلين the day will come when we will roll up the firmament in exactly the same way a scroll rolls up whatever is written in it or a book a binding or cover can roll up whatever is written in it. ما بدأنا أول خلق نعيده. In exactly the same way, we have initiated the first creation. We'll repeat it. كما بدأنا أول خلق نعيد وعد علينا إن كنا فاعلين. A promise upon us. Uh, verily, we will fulfill it. So crunch. Not because astronomers have reached. A final say in it, but because of this Quranic verse. And strangely enough, uh, the verse that speaks about the Big Bang and the verse that speaks about the Big Crunch come into one surah, one chapter of the Quran. The uh, verse that speaks about the Big Bang or points towards the Big Bang theory is number 30 in Surah Al Anbiya, the Prophet. And the verse that speaks about the uh, Big Crunch comes towards the end of the surah, uh, verse number uh, 104, ayah uh, number 104. And this is really a unique testimony that can speak to everybody that the Quran cannot be the work of God. So, يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءِ كَطَيَّ سِجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ كَمَا بَنَا أَوَلْ خَلْقِ النُّعِيدُ بَعْدًا عَلَيْنَا إِنَّ كُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ The day will come when we will roll up the firmament in exactly the same way a scroll rolls up whatever is written in it or a book binding can roll up whatever is written in it. In exactly the same way we have uh, started the first creation, we will repeat it. كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُ وَعْدًا عَلَيْنَا إِنَّ كُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ A promise upon us, verily we will fulfill it. This verse is also unique. Any, but it also points to a fact that cannot be reached by any human being. People who speak about the Big Bang and the Big Crunch also differ amidst themselves. Some say this is the end of everything. And others say this is a continuous process. Big Bang followed by Big Crunch, Big Crunch followed by Big Bang, and so on. And the Quran has here established a fact that cannot be reached by human being كما بدأنا أول خلق نعيد in exactly the same way we have created the first creation of the universe we will repeat it this means that the big crunch will be followed by only one big bang that will change everything in smoke from that smoke a different earth will be created instead of our earth and different firmaments will be created other than the current firmaments. And because of this, the Quran says, كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُ In exactly the same way, we have initiated the first creation, we will repeat it. And this is confirmed by another Quranic verse. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضُ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدَ الْخَارِ The fact that the big crunch will be followed by a second big bang only change everything in smoke and from that smoke Allah will create a different earth from ours it has to be a much bigger earth to accommodate the billions of human beings that preceded us after us until the end of this world so it must be a much bigger earth and that's why he says here when the day will come when the earth will be replaced by another earth and the firmament 
with other firmaments. وبرزوا لله الواحد القهار. And then every living being will be resurrected for the day of judgment. So in five verses, the glorious Quran has settled a very critical area that can never ever be settled by man. The first verse speaks about the expansion of the universe. والسماء بيناها بأيد وإنا لمسعون. Verily, the firmament we have built with great might and verily we will be steadily expanded. And science comes at the beginning of the 20th century to prove that we are living in an expanding universe. This uh, discovery um, actually uh, received lots of arguments by scientists and was not settled until the end of the first third of the 20th century. Then the Quran reads, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Having the unbelievers seen that both the earth and the elements were a singularity which we have broken asunder and uh, verily we have made out of water every living thing. Uh, isn't that enough evidence for them to believe? And then the Quran reads ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ فَقَدَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ when Allah uh, settled in a way that suits his glory uh, well, above the firmament well, it was all smoke and then he ordered both the earth and the firmaments to come into being willingly or unwillingly they answered we will come in willing obedience and this smoke has been recently photographed by the Hubble telescope and before this discovery uh, astronomers used to talk about a, a cloud of dust, a cloud of uh, fine particles. They never said smoke. And the Quran, a book revealed for more than 14 centuries ago, speaks about smoke. And this smoke has been actually photographed. Uh, scientists agree about the expansion of the universe. Will the universe keep expanding forever? Or will it come to an end? And the logic says it has to come to an end because the power pushing outwardly is decreasing. Universe a singularity, an initial singularity, similar to the first one. And this singularity will explode, change into a cloud of smoke. From that smoke, a different Earth um, than ours will be created. It has to be much bigger to accommodate uh, all the creation and different firmaments will be created and from that new earth which will contain every single atom of the previous earth uh, every human being and every form of life will be resurrected and uh, everybody will be pushed to the day of judgment and after uh, getting uh, the judgment there will be eternity in life to come either in paradise forever or in hell forever and as I said the big crunch theory the Big Bang Theory are accepted by Muslims, not because astronomers have reached a final goal in them, but because of these notions in the Quran, and as I mentioned earlier, the fact that the verse that points towards something similar to the Big Bang, and the verse that points to something similar to the Big Crunch, come into one surah, Surah al -Anbiya. of the surah ayah uh, verse number 30 and the big notion comes into towards the end of the surah uh, 104 and the fact that both the notion of the big bang and the big crunch comes in surah is a miracle by itself and then the quran speaks about the fact that uh, after the big crunch there will be another big bang everything will change smoke from that new smoke a new earth will be created much bigger than ours containing every single atom of our earth and other firmaments will be created and from the new earth there will be a resurrection and there will be accountability and judgment and there will be eternity in life to come so in five verses the glorious Quran a book revealed to an unlettered prophet in an unlettered society more than 14 centuries ago decides one of the most critical areas uh, confronting scientists 
and this is an area as i said earlier whoever would enter into it without divine guidance enters into a dark tunnel with no end without no light at its end this simply because none of us has witnessed the creation of the universe and that's why i repeat once more that these cosmic verses that speak about the description of the universe or the origin of the universe are among to prove to every rational person that the glorious Quran cannot be the work of man. It has to be the word of the creator in its divine purity. And it gives enough testimony to the correct prophethood of Rod Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's why the Quran uh, enhances every rational person to look into the universe, to meditate into the universe, to think about the creation of the universe, because we can see into the universe around ourselves and uh, evidence to testify to the fact that this vast immense orderly universe cannot be eternal it has a beginning and must have an end and uh, cannot have made itself and cannot be the product of an accident or a chance but it needs a creator and this creator has to be above all his creation neither matter nor energy can shape his identity, neither space nor time can delimit that identity, and this is a basic foundation for this. To worship that great creator without parallel partners or seminars, never associate others with Allah, because this is an area of great shirk, and Allah can forgive um, any mistake from human being except shirk associating others with Allah. And every single messenger from Allah, from Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon them all, came with this notion, worship Allah alone, without parallels, partners, or sisters. And Abdullah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayr. You have to worship your creator without parallels, partners, or seminars. You have no other deity other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the struggle between um, unifying the creator and associating others with him, or belief and disbelief, Iman and Kufr have been the theme throughout history from the days of Adam until the days of Muhammad until the, our time, until the end of this world. And for a coming episode, I leave you with peace and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wishing you the best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings and mercy be with you all.